I'm not good on stairs. My friends, welcome, as we honor a life well lived by our friend Mike, who spent so much of his days bringing comfort, peace, and solace to those who grieved. And yet today, he celebrates a new life and asks us to celebrate that life with him, that the promises of Christ have been revealed to him. And so we pray. Lord, your wisdom governs the length of our days, and we, as a community of family and friends, mourn the loss of our brother Michael, whose life has passed so quickly. But we entrust him to your loving mercy. Welcome him into your heavenly dwelling, and grant him the happiness of everlasting youth. For we ask this through Christ our Lord. Our first reading will be read to us by Molly Ahern. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The just man, though he die early, shall be at rest. For the age that is honorable comes not with the passing of time, nor can it be measured in terms of years. Rather, understanding is the hoary crown for men, and an unsullied life the attainment of old age. He who pleased God was loved. He who lived among sinners was transported, snatched away, lest wickedness pervert his mind or deceit beguile his soul. Having become perfect in a short while, he reached the fullness of a long career, for his soul was pleasing to the Lord. Therefore he sped him out of the midst of wickedness. But the people saw and did not understand, nor did they take this into account. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
Our second reading will be read to us by Pam Rio. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, buddy. It's not a little challenging sometimes. My sisters, my brothers, the Lord be with you. This is a proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, 
about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. And as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast, and one of them named Cleopas asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there these days? What things? he said. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all of this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, how foolish you are. How slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As he approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. And he disappeared from their sight. They asked one another, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road? and opened the scriptures to us. They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem, and there they found the eleven and those with them assembled together, and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way, and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Never in my wildest dream could I have imagined that I would be standing here before you. Mike's conversation with me was always about how he was going to handle my funeral how he was going to take great care of me. And I always said that he was going to have to fight Paul Faneuf between the two of them and bring the Irish and the French together. I want to acknowledge the many funeral directors that are with us today whose ministry to people and to the church is so great, who bring comfort like my peace and tranquility to those struggling with many questions, trying to figure out what in the world is going on at this particular moment. Mike's care and generosity and these important moments of life and death were not only kind, but extremely generous. A generosity that perhaps we will never know because he never spoke about it, he never told anybody what he did, how he did it, or as we used to say, how he made the magic happen. But it was just that. The man with that smile, that wit, 
I said, I must confess, one of our greatest parts of our relationship together over the years was who could tell the most off-color joke to one another and get away with it. It was a challenge. I often won. <laughs> to which, about a week or so ago, I sent him one while he was still in Boston, to which the only response I got back on the text was, Oh my God. But that was my brother Mike, and he was like the brother I had never had. Over the years, we worked so much. As a matter of fact, the book that I'm using uh, for this ceremony this morning, we've seen many days together with Mike, and it's falling apart. I'm doing all I can to hold it together, because it might be the last time I use this particular edition but it has served its purpose well, as Mike served all of us well. And I know that, like me, a few days ago, none of you planned on being here this morning. Nothing could have prepared us for this untimely moment or braced us for what our friend Mike was actually going through. However, in his own inimitable way, he prepared us his entire life with every interaction he had with each of us. That same kindness and generosity and humor and wit made each of us a better person for having been in his presence. All along the way, he did prepare us for this moment. And I always felt that when I looked at Mike, he reflected back to me the person I am, the person he saw, the person I wanted to be. That truly is a unique quality, but not one that is unknown to us. See, memory and time are two of the greatest gifts that God bestows upon us. Memory allows us to hold on to the past, both the positive and the negative, it helps us shape the future. It colors our present. Time, on the other hand, marks events, calculates our days, passes the years, and yet when used wisely, helps us heal the wounds of negative events our memories sometimes hold on to. Mike's faith was strong his love for life unshakable. In moments of despair and grief, he brought hope and solace. He did for others what he saw the Lord do, lifting, consoling, encouraging those around him to prepare them for what was to come. The disciples we just heard about on the road to Emmaus stated that they had hoped they had hoped that Jesus was the one, the one that would liberate them from all of their fears. And they finally realized that their hope had been realized and that hope did not disappoint them. I believe that Mike had the same hope all through his life. And he brought that hope to all of us every time we came into his presence. Hopefully, now we realize through our collective memories, like the disciples, that our hope has been realized and that this hope will not disappoint us. You see, Jesus made three promises to us, his followers. He promised us everlasting life. If we accept him and follow him, we will have the life of God within us. He promised us a life that would know no end, that death would not be the end, but the beginning, and that we would know the glory of an indestructible life. Jesus promised a life that was secure. He said that nothing would snatch us out of his hand, not even sorrows and death, since he is the everlasting life itself. 
our lives are safe in his hands. In a few moments, we, like the disciples, will sit down in a sense with a stranger we have met along the road to Florence. While we came, we talked about the things that have transpired these past few days, trying to figure out what happened. What do we do now? Where do we go from here? But this person who is no stranger to us really has spoken to us. He has opened our eyes to these scriptures now, and he chooses to stay with us and to share a meal. And together as a people of hope, we now join our friend Mike at the banquet of life that Christ has prepared for us. And we pray now that our eyes too may be opened and realize that Jesus and Mike are very much alive, truly risen, for death has no power over them because we have dared to recognize them in the breaking of the bread. Do not let your hearts be troubled, says the Lord. You have faith in God, have faith also in me, for I am the resurrection and the life. I think the secret to life is to actually die before you die and find that there is no death, only life. Every moment of Mike's life, he gave. With a smile, with a wink, a hug, a gentle touch, a knowing glance, a little piece of him died as he gave himself to us. But we, his friends, could do nothing more than to return that same love and confidence and strength back to him. And so he lived, never to die. And so until we meet again, my friend, we pray that God will hold you gently in the palm of his hand. Amen. Pray. My sisters, my brothers, Jesus the Christ is truly risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we now join our prayers to his as we respond here, our prayer. In baptism, Michael receive the light of Christ, scatter the darkness now, and lead him over the waters of death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our brother was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome him now into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Let's especially pray for Pat and Mike, Mike's parents, and all the members of the family who have gone before us, our friends. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Many die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer this unjustly these sins against your love. 
and gather them now into the eternal banquet of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Grant refreshment, rest, and peace to all those whose faith is known to you alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, the family and friends of Michael seek comfort and consolation. Heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We are all assembled here in faith and in confidence to pray for our brother. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And for all those intentions we hold in the depths of our own hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus the Christ, and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive whatever sins we may have committed through human weakness, and for all who sleep in Christ, grant them a place in your heavenly kingdom. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Please be seated.
Hello. Um, just here to explain uh, the gifts that were presented. Uh, we had Roger Grondon, Tracy Stevens, and Jerry Grondon Jr. Uh, presenting Mike's embalming school diploma. This diploma allowed him to do what he loves, and his parents were so, so proud of this accomplishment. So proud, in fact, that Pop-Up took 200 pictures before realizing that the camera had no film in it. We had the members of the Hoyoke St. Patrick's Parade Committee uh, presenting Mike's Irish walking stick, uh, which represented his love of all things Ireland, his Irish heritage, and his work with the Parade Committee. And finally, we had Anna Casagrande presenting Mike's Golf Club. This represented his love of golf, the sport that he learned from his father, grandfather, and Uncle George, and the friendships he gained through playing and teaching. Thank you. Friends, pray with me now that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that your servant Michael, who today has journeyed from this world, may by this sacrifice be cleansed and freed from all sin, and so receive the everlasting joys of the resurrection through the same Christ, our Lord. My friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as one alone he accepted death, so that we might all escape from dying. As one man he chose to die, so that in your sight we all might live forever. And so in the company of the angels and saints, we praise you as with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus the Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things, and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord, Jesus the Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night that he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her devoted and chaste spouse, with Michael, the archangel, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the order of bishops, the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, our brother Michael, whom you have called this day to yourself. Grant that he, who is united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the dead he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To all of our departed sisters and brothers, too, to all who are pleasing to you with their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. For there, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, now informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus the Christ, for the kingdom, power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. And anyone who believes in me, even though they should die, will never suffer eternal death. For I will raise them on the last day. Behold your Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. seats and father paul norman and myself will walk around to you just take your mask down as we come before you and give you holy communion in the hand as also uh, those who are not catholic if you want to just put your hands like this we'll give you a blessing for the reception of today's communion Thank <laughs> you. 
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your servant Michael, for whom we have celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, 
may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. And I'd ask Mike's brother Pat now to, or Dan rather, I'm sorry, Dan to come forward. A short seven months ago, can you hear me okay in the back? We get a thumbs up, okay. A short seven months ago, we had the chance to celebrate the life of my father and the kind and loving man that he was. It was 70 degrees with a nice breeze and sunshine. Brother Mike thought differently of us and told us that we were gonna remember him for this day for the rest of our lives for the bitter cold. So Bridget will have a chance to come up here after and, and share some words and I wanna thank Bridget for all that you meant to Mike, for the care and support and the love from your family. It meant so very much, and we thank you for that. On behalf of Mike's family, I would like to thank Father Bill Hamilton, Father Riley, Father Tuig, all of our concelebrants here today, Fred Marion, all of the words and the songs that you sang give us such peace and comfort, and for that we're so very thankful. Thank Mike's staff and fellow funeral directors. You have meant so much to Mike and so much to all of us. I also want to thank all of Mike's friends and family. You have been such a big part of his life. Mike loved life. Mike loved the game of golf, his Irish heritage, Fort Street. Mike loved to laugh, to have fun, to tell stories, and to help people. Mike loved to give, to teach, to coach, to be real, and to take care of people. Mike, more than anything, loved his friends, and loved his family. But Mike also enjoyed movies, and he had an encyclopedic knowledge of so many films and the uncanny ability to recite the perfect line at just the right moment. There was a post that he put on Facebook a number of years ago that he watched Uncle Buck for the umpteenth time and laughed as hard as he ever had any other times he had seen it. And some of you may remember that growing up at Fort Street with the old time cable box, he had rigged it with some toothpicks jammed in the buttons just right so that we could get free HBO and Cinemax. And I think that's what started it all. So as we are all here today, here in this chapel and those that are able to be with us through the blessings of technology, we can think of Mike's life like a movie. And the title of that is Be Like Mike. When you think of who could, who could play the leading role, nobody but Mike himself. Nobody could try. Throughout his life, Mike put together a supporting cast worthy of numerous Academy Awards, and he was the quintessential director and producer. He had the wonderful ability to find the right people for a role, coach them, and then let them perform to make a memorable work of art. Unlike an actor in a feature film, Mike didn't act according to any script. He just knew the right thing to say at the right time to make you feel comfortable. The movie Be Like Mike isn't some artsy film with French subtitles only shown at some special movie festival. No, Be Like Mike is a full-fledged blockbuster shown in multiplexes across the world. We've all been to movies that you can't wait for them to be over and you wonder why you wasted your money and to go to the theater instead of waiting for a rerun on TV. That's not the case for Be Like Mike. This is a movie where you come out of the theater reciting the best lines, telling everyone you know about your favorite scenes. It doesn't matter how many times you watch Be Like Mike, you always find a special moment that you don't remember seeing before that makes that viewing better than ever. Be Like Mike is a film that you hope never ends and are sad when it's over. You know there are so many wonderful scenes left to shoot and wish that it could be just a little or a lot longer. When you get through the sadness and the pain of the movie being over, you realize how lucky you were to see such a piece of cinematic art, because rarely does one that special ever come along. You think to yourself, could that storyline be true? How could that one character do all of those things, say all of those lines, and make such an impact in such a short film? That's when you truly appreciate the special gifts of the actor, producer, and director, and know that no one but he could have made such an impact. Luckily for all of us, we have witnessed the movie Be Like Mike in real life, and there is no better way to have taken it in. 
We are all fortunate to have played a role that Mike so deeply appreciated. Normally, you get to the end of the movie you really love, there is some disappointment and sadness, and you wonder, will I ever get the chance to see such a production again? Fortunately, Be Like Mike is more than a movie. It's also a how-to film, an interactive masterpiece that even when the leading man, director, and producer is gone, we still have the chance to carry on the legacy of this creative genius. Yes, we can all be like Mike. Mike has offered us a framework to be like Mike, while granting each of us our own artistic license and freedom to get with that portrayal. He knows we are up for the job and has the utmost confidence in our abilities to nail, nail our roles. It's now our responsibility to take the lead and live our lives according to the lessons Mike provided. It's not an easy task, but we all owe it to Mike to try like heck to live according to his script. If we all pay it forward, just, how, just think how much better of a place this world can be. So as we leave here, it's okay to be sad. Lord knows that Mike would cry at the drop of a hat, and so he's okay with us being that way. Um, it is okay to be sad. We've lost a genuine force of a man, and we have a hole in our hearts and a void in our lives without him here. But know this. Mike loved and appreciated each and every one of you so very deeply. You have all played a significant role in his life, but our jobs are not done. I ask you, our families, are, we ask you to love life. Remember to love life. Remember to love the games you enjoy playing. Remember your heritage and do what you can to promote that heritage with pride. Remember to cherish where you came from and appreciate all have helped you along your journey. We never make our journeys alone. Remember to laugh, to have fun, to tell stories, to help people. Remember to give, teach, coach, be real, and take care of people. Most importantly of all, remember to love your friends and to love your family with all your heart. Know that the movie Be Like Mike is not over. It's just to be continued. And we owe it to Mike to continue to share the story of his life so that he is never forgotten. My mother and father, God rest their souls, Pat, Molly, Jackson, and Aiden, Jenny, Rowan, Finley, and I are so thankful to have had Mike as such an essential part of our lives. He was an amazing son, brother, and uncle to us. We are fortunate for the everlasting gifts he provided. We so appreciate the love, laughter, kindness, care, and compassion that he provided our families. He packed so much into his short 55 years with us here on earth and is now creating a new film in heaven. And what a cast he's got to work, got to work with. Good night, sweet prince, and flights of angels sing thee, sing thee to thy rest. I have to lower this a little bit, I think. Can you hear me? <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, Dan. That was unbelievable. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to thank Father Bill so much, as well as Father Tui, Father Riley, and the other distinguished clergy, and Mike's family so, so much. Um, it's been a little challenging the last few weeks, of course, um, but I wanted to share a couple of things with you today that I think Mike would have wanted. Well, actually, we talked about it, so he planned this whole funeral, as you all know by now. So we talked about this, too. So um, when I started to write Mike's eulogy, I was planning on talking about our trip to Ireland.
two years ago, but not realizing that an article would be out in the front page of the Gazette today and gave a little bit of the story away. But in March of 2018, Mike got a good dose of the luck of the Irish when he won the uh, annual Holyoke St. Patrick's Day past president's raffle, the grand prize being a trip to Ireland. People said there is film of me being even more excited and jumping up and down than Mike was. But that's because I'd learned before that he'd even never been to Ireland. That was um, shocking to me, obviously, and to a lot of other people, because he had, uh, for decades, combined been very active in both the Northampton and Holyoke St. Patrick Day Committee. So finally, Western Mass's tallest leprechaun that there ever was was finally headed to the old sod. I'd been to Ireland before and have great friends there, Joe, Mary, Roseanne, and Peter, and we met them in Kinsale. And Peter Rafferty, a lot like Mike, is one of the funniest men alive. So of course they got along, like, like two peas in a pod. And they sat there all night long telling jokes and stories, and it was a hoot and a holler, and our stomachs were killing us the next day from laughing so much, it really was a great, great night. And, um, and since that time, Mike has just become as close with all of my Irish friends, and it's just, it's been very nice. So, um, obviously, our Irish friends were devastated, as we all are, um, when Mike passed away on Sunday. But Peter sent me this poem that I'd like to read to you now. I've read of a man who stood to speak at a funeral of a friend. He referred to the dates on the tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noted that the first came to the date of birth and spoke of the following date with tears. But he said what mattered most of all was the dash between those years. For that dash represents all the time they spent alive on the earth and now. Only those who knew and loved them know what that little line is about. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash. What matters is how we live and love and how we spend our dash. So think about this long and hard. Are there things you'd like to change? For you never know how much time is left that still can be arranged. To be quick to ang to be to, sorry, to be less quick to anger and show appreciation more and love the people in our lives like we've never loved before. If we treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile remembering that this special dash might only last a while. So when your eulogy is being read with your life's actions to rehash, would you be proud of the things they say about you and how you lived your dash? I think we can all agree that Mike lived his life and his dash pretty, pretty well. So I agree with Dan and what he said that family has always been Mike's number one priority. But Mike had three families. The first, of course, being his own family. In the five years we were together, I saw on a daily basis that he was the most devoted son and he genuinely cared and enjoyed caring for both of his parents before they passed. His brothers, Pat and Mike, they're Irish twins, truly, only 11 months apart. And growing up, Mike was always thankful that Pat was more frequently broken, uh, breaking the rules or curfews, so it was making it a little easier on him. And Dan, being much younger, was jokingly, or not, called the golden child. <laughs> and with their parents now solely focused on Dan, Pat and Mike could get away with a lot more shenanigans, and they certainly did. <laughs> but in all seriousness, 
Pat and Dia were Mike's best friends. He trusted them imp implicitly and would literally not make any big decision except maybe deciding what brand of cereal to buy without discussing it and getting their approval first. And he loved his nephews and his nieces fiercely and tried to show it as best he could from a long distance. Whether it was slipping Jackson a few bucks every time he saw him at UMass, or by surprising Aiden by giving him two Bruins tickets for Christmas. <laughs> when in fact he really bought four tickets and Mike flew down to DC for 20 hours to watch the game with him and Pat and Aiden's friend and Aiden had no idea. Or pre-COVID, whenever he got a chance, Mike would fly to Austin to see Rowan and Finley, his intelligent and beautiful nieces that I have heard more times than not he him gush about over and over again. Mike's second family was of course the Northampton Country Club, which was an integral part of his life since he was a little boy. It was the second home and a place where he literally considered everyone a friend. He would help out with the ice, buy rounds of drinks for the entire room almost every time he was there. Everyone I've spoken to or have heard from this week has underscored over and over what a genuinely nice guy he was. So nice, in fact, that he even was willing to play with Skip Pichette. <laughs> Mike's third family is the Holyoke St. Patrick's Day Committee. This year would have been his 20th anniversary of being an active member. And when I say active, I mean being active. He would volunteer for multiple committees. He served on the board of directors several times and chaired it twice. And in 2016, when he was parade president, and of course, <laughs> he asked me to address him as Mr. President. <laughs> uh, I, he insisted on attending every event he was invited to. There was a Saturday in February of 2016 where we attended five events in West Springfield, Chicopee, Westfield, East Hampton, and Northampton. It was exhausting. But he took, took such pride in his position, he took, took pride in the parade, and he loved and adored his parade family. And from the overwhelming attendance from the good 4-0 yesterday at his wake, I would certainly say that the feeling is mutual. So just a little bit about us. From knowing Mike when I was a much, much younger little girl, <laughs> watching that cute altar boy at St. Mary's, who was a friend of my Uncle Kevin's, to reconnecting with him on December 26, 2015, Mike and I really felt that there was kismet between us. Life didn't turn out the way we had pictured as young adults for either of us, both having failed marriages, no children of our own, and the experience of having lost our late partners, Kara and Jay, tragically and unexpectedly. These common experiences made communication, true friendship, and deep trust form overnight into true love. Our favorite song was God Bless the Broken Road by the Rascal Flats. And to just give you a few little words from that song, every long lost dream led me to where you are. This much I know is true, that God blessed the broken road that led me straight to you. And I have thanked God every day. I can honestly say that we were blissfully happy from that December evening in 2015 in Holyoke, of course, until he took his last breath. And for that, I will be forever grateful. So when Mike called me from Cooley Dick, at 6.15 a.m. last Sunday to say that he'd been given the news that he didn't have much time left and they were giving me permission to visit, I immediately got on the phone with his good friend, Father Bill, and asked him to join me at the hospital so he could administer the last rites. Father spent about 45 minutes with us and that left Mike with such ease. He was so comforted by the visit. And thank you again, Father. At that point, Mike, Mike just went into action, of course calling Pat and Dan, and then 
he called 43 more people, most of whom didn't even know that he was sick. He was calm, he was stoic and comforting, much in the same way he was with the thousands of families he had served in the 35 years of his career. It was truly amazing. And of course, he planned his own funeral, he wrote his own obituary, and he ordered the casket, all to help us, our family, once he was gone. He was selfless. Time got away from him, though. So, for those of you that did, he didn't get a chance to speak with last Sunday, please accept collect calls from Michael T. Ahern that may be coming your way in the future, because you know how we love to talk. So many wonderful things have been said, as Dan said, about Mike this since his passing. The outpouring at his wake and on social media has been truly astounding. And everyone was saying their version of what a wonderful guy he was, and we know he was. It occurred to me that nobody would have enjoyed all of this love coming his way than him. He might have been a little embarrassed because, as you know, he was a little shy. <laughs> yeah, right. So please join me and let's give him a standing ovation. He's so well deserved for being that wonderful guy and to living life fully in the dash. When Mike uh, realized that time was short, there was someone near him who asked how he felt about it, the fact that he was going to die. And his response was, well, you know, over the years, Def and I have had a pretty good working relationship. And that's how Mike dealt with everything. And said there's a great picture of him that's going around Facebook right now which I have to mention, and it's him in that long yellow top coat when he was president, marching in the parade, looking like Big Bird. But only Mike could convince you that no, it wasn't Big Bird, it was really the gold of the Irish flag. And that was our friend to a T. That smile and that warmth we carry with us, especially on a chilly day like today. So please stand and let us continue our prayers of commendation. My friends, trusting in God, we have prayed together for our brother Michael, and we come now to this, our last farewell. There is always sadness in parting, but we take comfort in that hope that one day we shall see him again, and we will enjoy his friendship, his smile, and his love. Although we may disperse in sorrow, we trust that the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, we console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. Just spend a moment in silent prayer of thanksgiving for the great gift that Mike has been to all of us and the privilege that it has been ours for having known and loved him.
into your hands, Father of mercies. We commend our brother Michael in that sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he too will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the many blessings which you bestowed upon him in this life, for they are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servants and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother Mike forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Mike, may angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you now to the holy city, the new and the eternal Jerusalem. Amen. In peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest. Thank you. 